Okay, folks, Tuesday evening, we're getting back to painting, and um, we're going to do a couple things. Let's need to clean this area out or clear it out a little bit of some of these colors that we used for the basing this morning. And then we'll get started, and we're going to break in the new uh, the wet palette. Not that that's going to be anything awe-inspiring or anything, but we're going to start using that. I got some colors that have worked themselves in here in places they shouldn't be. So this is the Everlasting Wet Palette version two, and uh, we're gonna put this thing to use. And um, is this thing zoomed all the way in or something like that? Seems like it's awfully close. No? Okay. Um, I need to adjust where this thing's sitting at. But, um, you know, we're gonna put this to use, and this, I noticed before I opened this up, I was actually going to do this and have it ready when we started. And then I realized something about it and I figured I'd comment about it. And um, we're gonna go ahead and get rid of this cardboard thing or end up using it for something else. I don't wanna look at all that scribbling. It's a little distracting and I got lots of this stuff, so. Yeah, I know there's something about this, and I wanted to kind of comment on it as I was pulling it out, because um, it's kind of unusual. And this is this this comes self-sealed. It comes with two of these pads, and I notice there's some moisture in here, and I have a feeling, and it's also kind of wet here, so I have a feeling this is already moistened, although it's not going to be as moist as you're going to want it. And sure enough, I don't know what the hell it's moistened with. It's got a pleasant smell. And this is going to sit in here. Now, see how much space there is around here? We're actually going to put water on it, and I bet it's going to end up expanding all the way to the end. Not that if it doesn't, it doesn't really need that, but let's, uh, let's try that out. I'll be right back in a moment. Well, I was kind of incorrect in that it didn't grow, and there's actually a little bit of space all the way around it. And as you can see, I've got extra water that's in here, and I want to see how that's going to react to the this. Now, for mold control, I actually looked a couple things up. I said I didn't want to start with this yesterday because I wanted to see kind of, you know, I'm having some mold issues. It's nothing to worry about. It's just annoying, and I didn't want to start off on the wrong foot. So um, I figured, yeah, I'll use a little bit of Clorox. Some of people said to put a little bit of ammonia. I'm not going to go there. This actually stuff actually says not to use. What does it tell you not to use? It probably eats up the thing. Uh, do not use alcohol or cleaning agent. So I'm guessing 
Ammonia is a hell of a lot stronger than alcohol. So we're not going to use that either. Somebody mentioned about using copper pens. Something about um, the copper attracts mold and it'll keep the whole thing from molding. So we're going to try that. And we're going to try to find some pennies that don't have that have never been used before. And uh, that might be a little challenging. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Because I've got my pile of pennies here. And I'm going to put one on each corner. I'm not going to put them up here. I'm going to put them underneath. Um, they're just going to be two in the way underneath. Um, two in the way up here. And... Certainly, there's got to be some some pennies that have never been used. There's two. I'm just looking for four of them. Three, four. Okay. Actually, no. This one right here. What's this guy right here? Yep, we got five brand new ones, so we can see how that behaves. Doesn't make any sense that it would work, but I'm not a science guy. I say that a lot because I'm not. I'm a history and geography guy. Not only am I not a science guy, I don't want to be a science guy. Some of that science doesn't make any freaking sense to me. <laughs> it's too, what, left-brained or whatever? I didn't say I was anti-science. just doesn't make any freaking sense the way I'm programmed. Okay, so we're going to do that. And I don't want to put them... Copper kills germs and stuff. Yeah, well, that's what I read. I'm not putting it here. I'm not putting them here. Okay, because that's going to interfere with this thing locking down. I'm going to put it underneath. Um, but I'm going to make sure that I don't have too much water in here to begin with. I don't think I do based on my experience before. Um, but we'll see. All right. The only bad thing about it is, is the old version, I just bought papers for it. So I've got like... 49 sheets for the original one, but painter membranes not compatible with painter version 1 and light. Well, sure it is. It's just too big. <laughs> Ooh, this actually has Ooh, I could just come rip it out of the bottom and I don't have to worry about cutting the top. Not compatible, like it's some kind of funny. Ooh, I don't want to catch this. Just one, right? Oh, this is different. This is a different material. All right, two sides are different. Let's read about this. Reusable 420, okay. Care instructions. Hydration membranes are one-sided. Get the best performance, always use the correct side. Put paints only on the side without any markings. Okay, that's, that's new. Now, so I don't have a problem with any of the old ones, okay? But I noticed they do have some fiber and I feel like I've pulled some fiber onto my paint occasionally by using them so maybe that'll eliminate this okay so this one has some markings on it this one does not here it goes I might have a little, a little too much water in there. So let's take, um, let's take a paper towel. All right, 
So far, this is behaving differently. And I'm going to give you God's honest, my God's honest, well, I always do. I don't like to mince words. If I think it sucks, I'm going to tell you it sucks. <laughs> I, I don't care. That's why I don't want to be sponsored by anybody. You know, people make a shit product. I want to call them on it. All right. Let's put, let's put a penny under each corner. Okay. You should be able to do that now. Put one here. One here. Or close to the corner. And then another one here. And another one here. All right. That's supposed to collect the mold. All right. We'll see about that. All right. Let's get rid of this. And get rid of that. And welcome, Kevin. Sorry. You've been here a while. Just in the middle of a bunch of different stuff. So we'll see how this works out. What's the worst thing that could happen? I go back to using the other one. You know? And this is pretty damn wet. Now, I don't already don't like the fact that it goes to the edge and overhangs. So it's... It's larger than the pad, but let's keep an open mind. All right. I also don't like the fact that it's pretty white, which is going to be a problem seeing white. All right. Mr. Black in the middle. And this is white. It's ivory. Ivory shouldn't be there. That's the color I should have gotten at Hobby Lobby. I went there the other day and I couldn't think of what color I needed, so I didn't buy anything. Still some paint in this one, but we need to put it somewhere because I got to struggle with that one. All right, and the gray we were using for the horse, which I think we were just done with. Yeah, we were doing the leather brown. We done anything else with the leather on this guy? No, we still have to do it and uh, and brighten it up some. All right, let's get everything where it's supposed to be. This is not as bright as it should be. So let's... Um, there we go. Okay. All right. Magic drippings, of course. It behaves really differently. Hopefully they tested this out with somebody. Not just like, hey, we found a way to make it, make it cheaper. That one's too big.
I'm going to guess that this membrane is going to dry out my paints faster than the other one because it looks thicker. I hope I'm wrong. But you know, the reality is, is if I don't like how this membrane behaves, I'll just use I'll just use the other things and put them on here. It's not like it's not going to be compatible with a sponge underneath. Not sure copper will stop mold, but vinegar or bleach. Yeah, it says not to use uh, bleach on here, so I'm not going to do it. Vinegar, I don't want to smell vinegar. I'd rather deal with a mold. You know, really, I could just let it air dry. You know, when I'm done painting, just let it air dry. But then you're guaranteed any colors that you mixed here, you're not going to be able to reuse, which isn't a big deal. I just got to remember, if I'm going to do it a different way, I've got to undo all of the... every which way I've been doing it the last... Shit, I've been painting with some kind of wet palette now for probably six years. Because I made my own. Before that, I was just using like a, like a plastic tile or a Pringles can lid or something like that. But I haven't used paint right out of the bottle in 30 years, probably. 30 years? Yeah. I've been using some kind of a mixing palette or something like that. All right, let's bring this up a little bit more. This almost has the consistency of poster board. You ever buy like poster board for any school projects and it has two sides, right? It has one that's fun to write on and the other one that's slick as snot. And if you're not careful, you use a marker, it'll smear on you. That's what this is like. This is like a shiny, shiny-ish. It's still way for thin, but We'll see how it goes. So after I'm done with the letter on this guy, I got to go pick out what shields these guys are going to have because I want their clothing to kind of, you know, go with, even though there's not much of it showing, to go with the shield color. Does this guy have a guy with padded armor? Nope. Chain mail? Yes. All right, so I need to determine that as well. So a little bit of planning. This is an Elaine Tuller figure here. All right, that's enough of that. So I did a count today. And if I average, if I average painting one figure a day, shiny, shiny side stops oils. I don't know if this is made for oil paints, but maybe the oils are, a little bit of oils are in here. I'm gonna use it as it's intended first before, you know, I call foul and we need to do it. Okay, um, all right, so we got to figure out what we're going to do here, and I feel like the lighting in here is all wrong, like it's in my face, and all right, it's a little bit better. I just, I pulled the lamp because I took pictures of yesterday with it, so let's, uh, let's go to my Excel sheet where I have all my shields here yeah, 
let's make this big and figure out what color we're going to do on the other one because we've got a green one we got that red one that we did we find it where it is Actually, let me, let me go grab it. You go grab these two stands. Anyway, I don't think I'll finish my sentence. I had coffee this morning, and they accidentally put freaking sugar in it. And it's literally fucked me up all day long. I'm, I should have gone back and... And said, why'd you put freaking sugar in my coffee? Because I never take... And it's just really messing with me. I I never have that kind of sugar. Okay, these are the two. So we have a white with blue with red, and then we've got the green and yellow one. Alright. Okay, so that one's a possibility there. I need to check on one thing. So we're going to, yeah. Anyways, what I was thinking, if I figure, if I average one figure a day, um, average, I'll be able to, um, that's what I was saying about the coffee, man. I'm getting pulled in every single direction. Um, I got just black coffee here just to keep me awake, but no sugar. If I average one figure a day, I should be able to finish by Historicon. But I got nine mounted figures to paint, and then the Emperor that's also mounted, and six guys, six other guys on his stand. So, one figure a day, I can do it. So, it's unlikely that Monday through Friday, I'm going to be able to get a figure a day. But, I should, if I do two on the weekends, I should be alright. So, we'll see. They'll either get done or they won't, and I'm not going to stress about it. The important thing is that they turn out well. Because if they don't turn out well, then I'm not going to be excited about painting them. So, they'll get done when they get done. Alright, so let me... I will be right back in a moment. And um, we will continue this in a moment.
Okay, sorry about that. I'm trying to multitask. And sometimes it doesn't work so well. Uh, okay, so we've got... Um, we've got a guy that's going to have a padded jacket. And why that's important is that... I want to keep in mind that, like, for instance, there's, there's a slight green theme to these guys. And these guys ended up having a, a green shield pattern. And I have another guy that has this, the, this padded jacket is very dominant. As a matter of fact, the other day I couldn't figure out what the hell it was. It almost looked like bark. And then I figured out it was padded. And it seems strange because the ends, the edges of it, of the actual individual pads, stick out higher than the center. I don't know if you can make it out there, but, but they do. And it's just very, very strange. Um, it's almost like if it was like a brick wall and there's mortar in between them, right? Tying all the bricks together. And the mortar, they put so much mortar on there that it's squished out from the bricks. So it's kind of like that. And that's not how I would have done padded armor. I would have done padded armor where it was, the, the edges come down into the creases. Kind of like all the padded armor I've done for like my World War II Russians and stuff like that. They've got like this, almost like a thermal looking jacket. But for whatever reason, the sculptor did the opposite on this. So it was very strange to look at. Um, I think he basically did it wrong, but it painted up okay. So with that in mind, um, I think there's two other guys to do that have that padded jacket. I like how it looks, but I have to kind of keep some, that in mind, which is not something I normally would have to. So... I believe I've got a red one or a, or a blue one to do. And I'd rather do a blue one than a red one. So that said, I'm going to lean towards doing probably a blue themed um, shield or something like that for these guys. So that kind of eliminates a lot of options that I have or a lot of choices that I have. Uh, I don't necessarily mean that in a bad way, but... Um, I don't want to do another red, white, and blue one. Damn it, that one also has a red rim. It has a different pattern on it. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do like a light blue on all the clothing. All right, because it's going to be a predominantly blue shield one way or the other. As opposed to which one it is, it doesn't really matter a whole lot. But it's going to be a predominantly blue blue sheet, blue sheet, um, padded. And as you can see there in the top right-hand corner, that's the padded armor that they, that they have. So it doesn't really... I don't think the sculptor represented it correctly. It's kind of deceiving of what it is, so. Anyhow. I know, we're off to a rocky start today, but. I don't see how people drink like sugar every day. So I think, I think if, I, if I'm not going to get, if I don't get a figure done every day, if I don't get these guys complete, I'm going to be really close. So I'm not too worried about it. I would just like to not have to paint three or four figures when I get back from Historicon for this army that I want to start working on the next one or at least daydream about it. Light blue. Something like this. Something like this. It's being obstinate. So I thought I was farther away from it, but. If I can get these three guys done by the weekend, 
If I can get them done before the weekend, I'm in good shape. We'll just see how it plays out. This is going to be really close to the color of the horse. Get there if we get there. I'm not going to kill myself. There's other stuff I need to do along the way. I played some a little bit of video gaming last night. I picked up that Field of Glory Empires and kind of tinkered around with that. It's just not something I can play for more than like a half hour, so it's not like it's taking that much time away from me. But it's a strategic game that is really complicated. There's a lot of levels to it, so I try to kind of figure it out playing somebody real easy. Like somebody has like one zone, like these goths or whatever. And it starts like in 310 BC. So, you know, they got like one zone and I'm good with the tactical battles. I've played the game quite a bit on the tactical battles, so I definitely do not want the computer doing those automatically because I can pull off some miracles in battles compared to the computer. But, you know, it's just an addition to this. It's not like, you know, I'm going to give up painting and, and gaming that. Because at the end of the day, you don't have anything to show for it. You know, but... Had it over the weekend. And when I was out of town, I took it with me. I didn't know what I was doing in the in the strategic game, but the learning scenario is Pyrrhus versus Rome. So you start off. I'm like I'm playing Pyrrhus, and I went after Rome itself, fought two battles back to back, crushed them in both of them, and uh, I took Rome, and it gave me like fifty thousand points or something. So it's just something ridiculous. Like okay, well I won that, but I didn't learn anything about the about the actual strategic game in that, you know. So, I'm like, I got to start with something that's a little easier with just one zone. Not one thing, one that has, like, I think Pyrrhus starts with, like, four zones or something like that. Or maybe three. It was too much in, like, a navy. I'm like, no. Let, let me just, just give me some backwater country. Uh, just give me some war band and, and uh, you know, I'll figure it out. So, mess with that a little bit yesterday. But it's not something that I really have the... In other days, I would have like the patience to like play something like that all day long. I just don't anymore. You know, I. That's just a nice little distraction. But it does allow you to export the game into Field of Glory too, play it, and then come back and export it back in the tactic in the into the strategic game, and. Um, you know, somebody was complaining that they didn't, in one video, that they didn't like to do that because you got to play every battle. And I'm like, yeah, and I'll freaking win them all. <laughs> like, I, I, I know how to play those tactical battles. You know, it's just DBA plus, you know, there's no pips and stuff like that, but still the same, the same theory to it. The medieval one actually looks a lot better than the, than the ancients one, but. I don't have the time to do those tournaments and stuff like that with, with people online. I tried a couple of them about a year ago, and I'm like, man, this is just way too time-consuming. I can't get any painting done while I'm doing this. So we just stopped doing that.
Well, it's a little too early to tell, but I'm not liking this membrane very much. I like the old one better, but we'll see. This is, um, it's definitely not going to loosen up any fibers that are going to transfer to, to your paintbrush, and then you'll put them on the figure. And it doesn't seem like it's this is very durable. But this, you know, look, I've only used it for, what, 15 minutes, 14 minutes, something like that. So what game was that? That was um, Field of Glory Empires, which is the strategic part of the Field of Glory series. So they made the, the, the tactical game that's like, um, I guess it'd be like DBM. And um, the Field of Glory Empires, you could actually play like a strategic kind of game, kind of like turn-based. Every turn's a year. And you could just play that by itself. I think there's a combat system in it. It is a lot more basic than a DBA-style game. Which, really, my only gripe with the battle is that there's no pips. So as long as somebody's in good order... They're not in combat. You can pretty much move them, move everybody every turn. And I've gotten used to not being able to do that. And I kind of like that restriction. But I picked it up. It was like 20 bucks or something like that. So whatever kind of inspiration it's going to give me, you know, for stuff, um, it'll be worth it. I already had Field of Glory 2. I don't have the original one. I had Field of Glory 2. The Ancients one and the Medieval one. And, um, and you know, if, you, if you're used to playing stuff like DBA or whatever, it's, it's a lot easier for us to pick it up than, than other people that are new to it. They're just playing it because it's a video game. All right, let's, let's brighten this up a little bit. But I picked those things up at a discount. I'm not paying 60 bucks for it. What if it sucks? You know? What if you paid 60 bucks for something that you hate? I mean, sure, you get your money back, but or you can after a certain amount of time. And I've done that before. It certainly makes me feel a lot more comfortable. I had picked up a, a game that everybody raved about. It was called... Um, Ultimate General Civil War or whatever. I know that should have been a sign of what am I doing buying a Civil War game. But it looked really good. But it ends up playing nothing like, you know, it's a war game for people that aren't, that aren't into history. Because nothing of what you're doing is even possibly, doesn't even possibly feel like the correct period. All right, let's do um, let's do some boots on this guy. Let's do some boots here. And I think I'm gonna stay consistent. We've been using this khaki color for the boots, not Russian brown. <laughs> Almost the same. So I'll probably, when I get when I get tired of doing this in about an hour, I'll probably do a little bit of video gaming and then shower and go to bed, you know. But it's not something that's like, oh, I'm not going to do any painting or I'm not going to do any DBA. I'm just going to play this electronic game. It doesn't, it doesn't scratch that itch.
video games aren't going to keep me from painting. I've been playing video games, video games longer than I've been painting. I just don't have the stomach to spend all day doing them anymore. I just don't have anything to show for it. Anybody could play a video game. I'm curious to see if those pennies do a damn thing. That was just somebody's suggestion. Okay, let's, um, we're pretty much done with this. Let's go ahead and do um, the things that are dark red on here. That's kind of the theme that we're going through all the stands as we're leaving all the, the straps and stuff like that, all the harnesses in that dark red. To kind of, kind of tie them all in together. second. put my glasses on so I can see what the hell's going on over here. That's going to be too big. That's one that we do for faces. This one should work just fine. Three folks, good evening. Kevin and two others. Kevin can be your community spokesman. <laughs> There you are, Nordic. Good evening, man. The walking man. Things are well, even though this evening I was planning on doing A and I ended up doing B, but you know, it is what it is. Things didn't work out exactly how I wanted them to, but. It's no big deal. Um, I wasn't planning on painting, but it probably worked out for the better. 
I did a count earlier today, and if I can paint, if I can average, I can't paint one figure a day. It's not possible. But if I average painting one figure a day, then I'll be done in time for Historicon. But I think it's going to be really unlikely. But at least that gives me hope that it won't be a lot left. I just want to hit the next project when I get back. I don't want to be like, man, I still got to paint another stand. I still got to paint like the command post or something like that for this army. So. But, you know, like I like to say is these guys will be done when they're done and they won't be done any earlier. You're fighting your airbrush. Had known you were on, I would have come on. I'm about to rage retire my airbrush permanently. Sick of it not working right and the compressor sucks. I'm with you, man. I'm with you. So one of our um one of our local guys, we were talking about airbrushes a couple of years ago. Actually, it's probably been five years ago now. And how he had one, he bought one at Harbor Freight. And it only cost him less than 100 bucks, and it came with a compressor. And I'd used an airbrush before, back in the early 90s when I used to work at a hobby store. And we didn't have a compressor. We had a compressor, but we didn't have a compressor with, it, with, a, um, with a tank. And that was back when I was doing 135th scale stuff. So I'm familiar with how to use it. It was a Pache airbrush also. Um, I'm familiar with how to use it. Um, but I don't know if I could justify spending, you know, 150, you know, anywhere between 102 to 100 dollars for an airbrush, and then I'm going to want a compressor, and I'm going to want the tank to stabilize it. You know, I, I don't need to spend 600 dollars on something that I may not get have a use for it. Okay, like if somebody said, hey. Um, you, I know you use a paint palette. They're now all $600. I would have to buy one because I'm going to use it. But spending $600 on something you may or may not use is the wrong track. So I'm like, okay, well, let me, uh, let me go to Harbor Freight. and Not that I go there ever. And, um, and pick out uh, and get one of these. And try it out, and that's what I did. The spray paint on all of my. If you look at the mat game mats on my, uh, on our games, they were done with the spray thing, and it is a shitty airbrush and a shitty compressor that's running all the time. And you know, I'm like, I'm gonna do it right this time, right? Um, one thing I was bad about was thinning paints before. I've been talking about in the early '90s, so I'm gonna go online and see what it can make it. And I found out that people are using this stuff called Jesus Juice. And it has all these all these different ingredients in it, um, distilled water and, and a little bit of Windex and some um, some flow stuff and the Vallejo airbrush thinner. Uh, not not huge. It's mostly distilled water, and um, and it seemed to thin the paints pretty well. But you know it starts working great and just a, and then just won't work no matter what I do to it. And then I have to tear the thing apart and I'm spray painting in my garage where it's super hot all the time. And it's just a pain in the ass. So I ended up, I'm, not, I'm never going to use it again. I'm, I basically, so I understand the frustration level. You know, and, it, and it's like, I don't mind that this painting that I'm doing is taking forever. Or that it's really slow. Because it builds upon what I'm doing. So, you know, maybe all I do is one shield. But the next day... The shield's done, and I can move on and paint something else. Not like, okay, I have these great plans of getting all this stuff airbrushing, and I'm halfway through it, and I've got this splatter stuff, and I have to pull the needle out, and it's a pain in the ass. So uh, that basically made me decide that I'm not going to buy an airbrush. And yes, I, I know that I bought a cheap-ass one, but I just... Don't think it's worth it for frustration, you know? I don't have too much left in army. I don't. I see the end of the tunnel. I see the tunnel. The one I have is a starter Iwata NEO from Hobby Lobby. I haven't upgraded since I got it in 2007. It's, I, that's a lot better than the one I have. I one I have is a literally a piece of shit. 
Um, you're having that problem right now. Just clean it real good several times. Just isn't working. Yeah, it's a suction issue. Like sometimes it just doesn't want to suck the paint, and you thin it, and it just in, it it's very inconsistent. Um, very inconsistent, and that's really frustrating because even though this is slow, I am making progress. When you're trying to get something to work and it's not working at all, you're making zero progress and you're getting frustrated. Especially, you know, if you have a limited time amount of time to get do something like, okay, I wanna, I only have an hour. Let's let's paint this. And the next thing you know, you've spent 45 minutes trying to get it to work, and you only have 15 minutes left, and you still have to clean the airbrush. I'm like, let me just opt out of this, you know. Let me just opt out of this. Um, it's just real inconsistent. And that was that way before, you know. Back in the 90s when I worked at the store. Sometimes it'd work. And you put it down for a second, it changed colors. You came back and it wouldn't suck the next color up. And you could thin it, you could do whatever you want, you know. I don't know if it had an air leak in it or it just it's just too much drama. Way too much drama. So we'll let the people that can handle that uh, do that. I, I have no interest. So I totally sympathize with you retiring it permanently. It's not worth putting your hand through the wall. You know, you spend countless hours on internet forums trying to figure out what you're doing wrong. And then you have a clue and it works for a little bit and it stops working again. I'm like, yeah, it's not my thing. And, you know, it's not like you just say, well, just buy the one that's $1,000 and you won't have any problem. You're going to have problems, too. And you can't just throw money at the problem and it goes away. <sighs> Thought about hand painting my tank. We're going to do a mass 35th for you. I don't have a problem with Tamiya paints. I know how to thin them, but anything else just doesn't work. Yeah, that's what we used to do in 135th scale. We're using the Tamaya stuff. Didn't work with Vallejo. It didn't work with the craft paint. I was wasting a ton of paint, making a mess. It's not for me. It's not for me. And like I said, the worst thing of all of it is, while I'm, while I'm fighting with this thing, I'm literally in the hottest part of my property. Um, you know, it's not like I'm in here where it's, you know, comfortable. I'm, you know, in 90 plus degree heat. So, yeah, no, I'm just going to call it a win that I was able to paint what I did with it. And um, got my money's worth out of it. I'm just going to tap out, you know. But it's funny, some people won't have, some people might be really good at airbrushing, they don't have the patience to do this. And I'm like, this is so forgiving, you know, paintbrush works every time, you know? <laughs> yeah, the Tamiya paint behaves really weird with, um, with water. Really weird. It's almost like it's an alcohol base. You could clean your brushes with water, but it's like an alcohol-based paint. And I don't even know what to call the stuff. We we worked at the store. We always called it Tamiya. Although it might be Tamiya or Tamiya or, you know. Oh, well. 
I found out I didn't need an airbrush before I spent five or six hundred dollars. So I call it a win. <laughs> Mr. Sheiks, go Tony, go. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I can't wait to daydream about what I'm going to do next. I can't wait. I've narrowed it down to about 400 armies. I just have to stick with it. You know, I have to think long and hard because once I determine I'm, I've got to do that, I, I can't jump around. I won't have anything to show for it. You guys won't see new battles and stuff, stuff like that. Bet you Rick is lurking somewhere in the shadows. That's all right. He's under the doormat. I wish there was a way, and you don't realize this unless you put your own content out. I wish there was a way... If I get any closer to that mini, I'm going to have to buy it here. Yeah, that's what I got to do now. Yeah, I got all up in it, you know. The miniature never complains. It's always satisfied. Whatever the hell that means. The Gordian knot of army choices. There he is. Captain Utah. <laughs> Excellent. Well, if you don't, unless you do your own content, you don't realize. I can't, I can tell there's supposedly seven viewers, but I can't tell who it is. I mean, it could be, you know. You know, Nazis from Argentina, or it could be, you know, nuns or something, you know, somewhere in between. And, um, you know, I wish that wasn't the case. So I could say, hey, what's happening, Joe, or, you know, whoever. But, you know, you guys have a right to just lurk if you want to, you know. <laughs> you got a sword for that knot, yeah. There you go. So, like I said earlier, I did a count today, and if I, if I average one figure a day, I'll be done in time for Historicon with these guys. Now, average, you know, so we'll have to do like, you know, three on a weekend, or, you know, two and a half or something like that, because during the week, I can't, I, can't, I can't do that many. It just isn't going to happen, you know. I can, I can pretend I'm going to, but I'm not retired, so... One thing's for sure, Rick and I are not nuns. Yeah, you're, you guys are a lot more fun at parties, I bet. <laughs> Nazis hiding from in, in Argentina. Are there still any of those alive? I had one guy that I worked with and he said that he said that his um, his grandfather, I don't think it was his dad, his grandfather was a was in the German army for World War II and he had gone to South America. That's where he was born. So I guess he's a quarter German or whatever. But I didn't say he was a Nazi. I just, he just happened to be a, I didn't ask him anything else. So that was a while ago. This is a guy that, this guy pissed me off. <laughs> This guy pissed me off. He was working where I work when 9-11 happened. And um, I'm never going to forget this. And he says, you know, 9-11 happened because there's too much freedom in this country. How much freedom do you need? And without missing a beat, I'm like, I want all the freedom in the freaking world. Who do you think you are to keep shit from me? You know, I'm a freedom glutton. If you don't like it, go live somewhere else. Where there's, there's lots of places that don't have any freedom, you know? So, you should be able to do whatever the hell you want as long as you're not inflicting harm or your will on other people, you know? Where is the color I'm looking for? I guess I need to turn on my Tweedledee light over here. I'm looking for... I mean, I guess this one would work. We'll just use this. Even though we've consistently used the same... Nah, F it. I'm fine in it. I'm never going to forget that. You know, some things you, that happen, you just never... You never forget. That just happens to be one of those things. How much freedom do you need? All of it. Who are you to keep it from me? All right. 
I'm looking for the U.S. field drab. That's English uniform. Dog ate it? Yes, tan earth. Man, I'll use another color if I have to, but it's not like people come in here and take shit. I mean, I've got, hell, I even have two bottles of this stuff. I got an old one and a new one. Today's just been ate up with all kinds of little problems. I was planning on doing A and ended up doing B and there it is. It just doesn't look right. It doesn't look right. All right, we found it. Super bummed out to find out foreground terrain is shutting down. MDF terrain is a pain, but their stuff was pretty good. Foreground terrain. I don't, don't tell me that's the people that make that 20 millimeter stuff I was looking at. <laughs> it feels field drab. It's right here. It was just looking like orange and shit. It didn't look, it didn't look right. I don't know. Foreground terrain. Don't tell me that's the guys that made like the 20 millimeter Stalingrad stuff. Why do I feel like I know who that is? Why is that? Because it's extremely difficult to run a business. Even if you know what you're doing, it's really difficult. Foreground turn. Damn it. Now I'm going to have to look and see what it is. I know I've, I know I've looked at it. I bet that's who it is. Foreground I like MDF terrain. I think it's a good idea. Foreground going out of business. Let's see, foreground. I hope their stuff sucks. That one way I won't feel about it. Bad about it. I doubt that's going to be what it is. Foreground in the UK. Websites now closed for ordering. 20 millimeter model kits. Oh, I can't even check what their stuff is. Foreground 20 millimeter. Yeah, they're the guys that made the Stalingrad City. God damn it. And the farmhouse. Sons of freaking bitches. I hate that, man. I never got a chance to buy their stuff. Well, the reality is, is I wouldn't have gotten around to painting it. But still, you know. Yeah, that Stalingrad ruined city freaking looked awesome. Oh, well. I'm probably never going to get around to doing 20 millimeter again. I hate to say it. Foreground. Well, they have it in different scales, you know. 3D printing probably hit them hard. Yeah, I don't really want the stuff. Maybe it's probably better for me that it's harder to get. Normally 28 millimeter, yeah. I'll never paint 28 millimeter. It's the, I'm a 20 mil guy. That just does this in 15s. I got so many 20 mils to paint that I love from my hero sculptor that, you know, I like that scale. 
And I've got so much stuff to do, but yeah, I remember seeing it. See, that's funny. I haven't looked at their stuff in like two years, but I remember the name. You said foreground, and I'm like, son of a bitch, that's the guys that make the Stalingrad stuff. And sure enough. I still have 20 millimeter buildings from a company called, I want to say the name of the company is called Queen's Hussars. And I think the, the molds are bought by somebody else, but they're like these terrain pieces that are all resin. They weigh a metric ton. And unfortunately they crack really easy. Um, but I've got like a, a farmhouse and like two like city buildings to do that. I don't know. I bought them 20 freaking years ago or more than 20, probably 25 years ago. Check Noble Knight Badger Games. I still have some stock. It's all pre-painted terrain. Uh, if I want 20 millimeter stuff, I'll look at historic. I'm going to try not to get into that because the reality is, is if I do this that I'm doing now, we're going to use it. It's going to get used all the time. So investing my time to painting it makes sense. Going off on a tangent and painting my 20 mil stuff, you know, it, it's just not going to get used. As much as I love it, um, you know, the guys may hate it, you know, so it doesn't make sense to do anything other than this right now. And World War II skirmish isn't more fun than this. I mean, crazy shit happens, but it's a lot of work for me, you know. Yeah, I think MDF is a great is a great thing. I don't know about 3D printing. Hopefully it wasn't 3D printing that did them in. I'm not a big fan of 3D printing. 3D printing almost seems like electric vehicles. You know, like they're not there yet. You know, there's, it, it's not bad, but, you know, some of this stuff is just, it's got too much flash. Or it's got, you know, patterns on the material where you don't want it. You know, some stuff's okay, but, I mean, I'm never going to print any myself. I've, I've already got, and, you know, the reality is, is I used to take drafting, so I technically have a skill set that would be useful for that. But I get frustrated with, with electronic stuff. You know, the first year I took drafting in college, 1990 or something like that. And the hardest thing was getting the paper formatted so it'll print the right size. So the formatting thing is like a nightmare, you know? And I'm not buying some printer that's made in China, so. reason they're closing down is the rising cost is too much for them 3d printing has a way to go i've seen i've seen some stuff that's really really good the little um this is why i don't get anything done but i don't mind because it keeps me involved the nice one of the nicest things i've seen 3d printed is, is this right here is my little dracula guys Oh, I'm not going to pull them out if they're not here. They're tucked away in something. Are they here? I'm lying. I'm going to pull them out. And this is actually the first plastic stuff. I don't know if I call it plastic. show them to you if I can't find them. I travel with these things and then I don't want to take the time to put them back in my case because I may need to go out with them again. There's the Im impaled skeletons. The forest of the impaled, yeah. These, 
Sometimes things turn out a hell of a lot better than I could even imagine. And this is one of those times. <laughs> and then I got a dickweed story to tell you about. <laughs> I painted these things up and I think they looked really good and they painted up really, really well. I, I couldn't even imagine them turning out any better than that. And then I post them online and some dickweed says, well, those don't look like they're 15 millimeter. I'm like, well, I didn't fucking make them, you know? <laughs> You could complain to the guy that uh, that said they were 15 millimeter. They worked for me. And um, I don't know that these could have turned out any better. But I am hesitant to them being, they could snap, I guess. But um, these have no flash. And you can't even tell that they're 3D printed. Uh, the whole modeling and miniature industry is struggling to cope with 3D printing. Looks like a welcome from Vlad the Impaler. That's right. Party favors. That's right. When Vlad says he wants you to do something, you freaking do it. Or you may, you may end up with, uh, you know, a telephone pole enema. <laughs> Anyways, um, I don't have a problem buying these from people. I'm just not going to print on myself, you know. I, I've got plenty of things to paint. I, I would only want to do 3D printing because it allows me to get something that's not available commercially um, by a standard manufacturer. Not that I want to make 20 of them, so I want to save costs. On, that's not me. I, you know, I'm, I'm perfectly happy paying retail. So, um, but those... Oh, and the, and the throne for the Pope, too. The Pope's throne. You know, they, they're, they're really nice things. That particular Etsy vendor does a really, really good job. And I'd say they're pretty freaking affordable. I mean, the shipping costs more than, than the actual items. You know, I think that they're really a high-quality product. You know? So hopefully the 3D printing stuff isn't hurting the rest of the industry because I prefer white metal. I just, I like the heft of it. But if it's not available in white metal, then yeah, I'll go to different sources. Uh, I just don't want it to be a material that's very bendy because I'm afraid of the, my paint flaking off. And I don't want to re, I spent enough, I spent stupid enough time painting these guys. I don't need to do it even more. So, but I know that the show that we go to in Orlando, before uh, the pandemic, there was this vendor that was there that was trying to get everybody to like, hey, you need to get a 3D printer, you need to do this, you need to do... At the time, I actually didn't have a computer. I didn't get a laptop until, like, I had a computer, I just didn't have one that worked. Um, and, uh, you know, you don't have, you know, you, I can't be into everything. I don't have time to be into everything. So, um, that's where I, uh, I just figured, well, I don't, I'm using my phone as pretty much my laptop and it wasn't until I wanted to do this multi-stream and found multiple reasons to get a computer or a laptop that I got. And I got it right in the right time because I think like a month afterwards, they weren't available anymore. You, they were just very difficult to, you know, pick one up at a store. You had to like pre-order it. I'm, I'm just not spending it couple grand on something that's sight unseen, you know. So the timing was okay, was good on that. But this particular vendor was trying to get people to buy 3D print stuff. Oh, you could print 20 of these tanks. You'll never need any more tanks. And I'm like, I got plenty of things to paint now. I need, you know, I need people to paint. I need to snap my fingers and, and things get painted. You, you got any way to work that in? I don't need like cheap stuff. I got plenty of lead. I could like not buy anything ever again and not run out. So 
that's not really geared for, you know, for me. And just my experience on it, you know, I don't want to have everything set like, okay, you know, it takes all day to print, to print something, right? So I don't be like, okay, you want to build this like Chinese wall or something like that, that I'm going to paint when I get home. And little do I know, an hour after I leave work, it starts to shift on the tray or whatever. And I come back and I have a freaking mess that, you know, is going to be, is not going to work, you know? So I don't need more frustration. I actually haven't got much of a mountain of shame. If I wanted to, I probably could paint everything I have left over for the summer. Only reason I have a mountain is I've just gotten too many good deals on stuff. Like I'd go to a flea market. I'm not leaving that for a dollar. Oh, they're a dollar a pack. I'll take them all. You know, I'm not leaving them there. And I have no regrets with my 15s. No regrets. Because many times I'm like, hey, I wonder if I have that. Yep, I have figures for that. Somebody says, hey, do you got a guy that will work for it? Yep, I do. Time is our greatest constraint. Work is my greatest constraint. I guess time from work. Yeah. <laughs> I think we all have a mountain of shame. Best to work with what you have. Yeah, like um, when I was working on my Ottoman Turks, you know, they came out with some Ottoman Turk, new to Ottoman Turk figures as soon as I was done with my army. And I'm not going to just like, oh, throw them away and start with the other ones. I'm, I'm happy with what I have. I've, I've painted some tabletop games Normans, even though there's some other cool Normans going out. You know, I, I don't mind, uh, I don't mind painting old figures and you have to be happy with, you know, you're never going to be happy. If you, if you keep trying to keep up with the Joneses, you're going to have nothing, you know, so just make the best choice that you, you can with the information that's available and just move forward with it. So I have no problem playing old tabletop game. Oh, those aren't the best figures out there. That's right, they're not. But um, I get a kick out of painting not the best figures and make them really shine. Because even some of the crummiest figures look pretty good when you're done with them. Or I'm happy with them anyways. So I got a shitload of Normans that are less than ideal. I don't care. I'll use them. I think they paint up just fine. All right. These figures I've only had about two years. So I haven't had these that long. Couple hundred AWI, but same CW. This is only a tank, but I need to get replacement turrets for a lot of them because there are a lot missing turrets. I remember I used to have some CNC micro armor, and man, their 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 barrels and stuff were to scale, and they were a freaking mess. They like turned into spaghetti in no time. But when I got them, they had a lot more variety than GHQ did. Now that's not the case anymore. I think they still make them, but they're kind of hard to source. I think somebody else took them over. They sold them to another company. I forget who it is, but. There used to be a store in Jacksonville about an hour and a half away from me that would stock that stuff. And they stocked them in Tampa in the 90s. And we'd take road trips and go down there and Go to the stores and come back with stuff that you never painted. <laughs> I actually don't miss those days, you know. I like minifigs too. But they're ancients and medieval and renaissance stuff. Um, I don't know about the black powder stuff. They're kind of, I think Mitch has a lot of his um, Napoleonics or minifigs. And they're really pretty small. Um, but I always thought minifigs were proportioned correctly. Unlike Essex, the Essex guys look very, like they got a case of dwarfism. 
And, um, and the minifigs guys are always proportioned well. Uh, they may not be the most exciting poses, but they're proportioned well. So yeah, I guess a lot of people were waiting on this uh, version of this paint palette. I, I, so far, I don't like this paper better than the other one. It's just weird. It's just odd. I'm going to try it. I'm going to use it. And hopefully I'll think differently about it. But it's, it's just kind of weird. And of course, this figure is no longer available. Elaine Tulare has been out of production for at least seven years. The sculptor slash owner, distributor, he ran everything through his house, as far as I understand. And he passed away about seven years ago, lived in the south of France. And I do have my, one of, I think the third or the fourth army I ever painted, which is my Kogorio Korean were his, some of his figures. And I've got some other figures for my feudal Spanish. And then I picked these guys up from in a trade a couple years ago. And um, I'm gonna do a feudal Spanish army at some point around the time of the 1200s. And we'll use some of those figures for that, along with some of the other ones to mix in. but. I pretty much like everybody's figures with some exceptions um, of the stuff that I do. And, you know, I may not like a certain amount of figures and there's people that are big fans. As a matter of fact, if I had, if somebody said, what's your least favorite manufacturer in 15 millimeter? And you have to keep in mind, it's the 15 millimeter stuff that I do. So there may be something, somebody that makes World War II stuff whose stuff I don't like, but I don't know. Uh, you shouldn't tell you this, but Old Glory 15 is having their Christmas in July sale. Yeah, I buy stuff when I need it. It's okay. I wish Old Glory 15s didn't take so long to get the stuff, but you got to plan. Nah, I'm not tempted. I'm not tempted. My, my MO now is buy things when I'm, wait till last minute to buy them until I can't back out and like fall into the trap of buying stuff and never doing anything with them. I don't mind paying more, you know. Um, it's it's more of a waste to have extra because what happens is, is I'll order a bunch of stuff and then I'll be like okay that's cool but that's not what I want to work on next so why did I even bother ordering them so I know I know this guy okay I know how that I know how this guy operates he's a pain in the ass sometimes so you got to keep this got to keep him on a short leash <laughs> so I'm not tempted by sales I am tempted by you better get it now because they're going out of business. But I won't be buying any 20 millimeter stuff. It's just a shame. Maybe they'll come back and. I hate seeing manufacturers that do stuff in 20 millimeter going out of business. But. Honestly, I've got plenty of stuff to paint before I need any buildings. And I've got some buildings to paint, so. But anyhow, um, there may be some figure manufacturers I'm not aware of, but of the figure manufacturers I've come across with, the one I dislike the consistently the most has big fans of it. And it's Splintered Light. I absolutely dislike most of their figures. I don't like the style they're done in. They're lanky. Um, they're, they're almost done like... I mean, I've got some of the Normans. It's, it's like... 
Did the guy just want to make him look bad on purpose? I, I don't know. I, I'm not a fan of Splinter Light at all. But, you know, that's just me. Obviously, they're, you know, they don't make a subject matter that really interests me either. So that's not really that big of a problem, but. But I will paint some of their figures because I've got some and eventually I'll, you know, work them in, but they're really weird looking. And, you know, stuff that shouldn't look weird like chain mail, like just the chain mail just looks really inconsistent how it's done. And sure enough, they're made here in the U.S. and the stuff that I like is made in the U.K. You know, I always like, I always like the U.K. stuff. Or, you know, Italy. Well, Italy is just cost prohibitive. You have to get them from somewhere else. I don't feel like the shipping from England has been crazy yet. Mr. Clay, welcome back. All right, it's time to do the lance on this guy. I'm gonna go with old buff. All buff and shit. That's Iraqi sand. This is buff. I'm not sure when I had a mountain of shame. No, nope. I got a couple of minutes. I need to get dinner out of the oven. You wish Corvus Belly was still making ancients. Really like the lines they make. See, I wasn't a fan of theirs. I wasn't a fan of their stuff. Um, mainly because they were shaped like Essex. So they're kind of stumpy. And they had these big cheekbones on every single guy. And I have some of their figures, don't get me wrong. I've got some of their figures, um, like they have their head covered or <laughs> I just have cheekbone issues with, you know, some of the figures, but um, I, I will work anybody's figures into stuff. But I do have some, um, some uh, long bowmen and stuff like that from them that probably will end up working their way into an Anglo-Irish army, more than likely is probably what I'll use them in. Because I'm not building a 100 Years War English Army because the two Harbachs each have one. So they're so silly for me to build them. Now, if I was like, you know, from England or something like that, where it's like, I don't give a shit. I'm painting an army of my people. You know, like if they all wanted to build a Spanish army, I, by God, I'm still building one. But, you know, I'd rather build a 100 Years War French Army. I get to do a sillier accent. But again, um, Corvus Belly had a lot, most people really like Corvus Belly figures. Um, like I love the look of, and I've never painted these figures. It, I love the look of um, Legio Heroica. I love the way they look. And whoever they got to paint those figures and put them online, kudos to them. Because they freaking sell them. And, but the shipping is just cost prohibitive. You know, it's like a ridiculous amount plus 20% of your order. It, no, you can't order things from Italy. You know, not here. You know, you have a bunch of the box sets for the Spanish. Okay, so like the uh, Iberians and stuff like that. Yeah, lots of people like that stuff. So, uh, I want to say somebody's still making the Corvus Belly figures though. I want to say... Um, the people that are making the figures for um, that game called I want to say the Lurkio guys are making them. 
but they may be casting ladder resin. I'm not sure. You had a question about CPs. They go on 40 by 40, and are they worth making? This is for Samurai. Well, they can be by 40 by 80, but I wouldn't make them 40 by 80. Yeah, they're worth taking. Um, they, they look deceptively stupid that they wouldn't be good in play, but just to kind of give you some pointers, they only cost one pip to move. They are a blade general that doesn't recoil, that does not get quick killed by knights. So the only way to kill them is um, doubling them, which is very hard to do with a blade general. Or have two infantry, two foot units that are contacting two edges. So in other words, almost like a, a door closure thing and um, on a tie. So if they've got, you know, if they're sitting like this and they've got two units that are contacting them on two different sides and it's a tie score, they'll pick up. Otherwise, you've got to double them. It's the only way to kill them. Um, they can't move into close combat. Uh, they don't shoot at a distance. They can't move into close combat or overlap. So they're like a war wagon that doesn't shoot, but it's a blade general. So basically what you do is you put them somewhere and your enemy goes somewhere else because it's like crashing into a brick wall. Can you go through a hit brick wall headbutting it? Absolutely, but you will get a headache, you know. Um, but they look really cool, um, you know, and they still maintain, they're a blade general, they still maintain their quick kill status versus knights on ties. So put them behind somebody that's going to get killed by a knight general, and then the knight general moves in a, into combat with them, and then you tie and you quick kill the knight. So they're deceptively nasty. You don't need them, but I got lots of two dragon figures to use. Yeah, they look pretty cool too. Plastic Soldier Company. Oh, okay. That's who it is. Yeah, I thought somebody was still making them. I really want to play. I really want to paint Legio, and I really want to paint Forged in Battle. I really want to paint Forged in Battle, regardless of the cost, regardless of how many extra figures. But I have a really hard time just painting one manufacturer. Just like I'm only going to put this manufacturer's figures on my stands. I'm like, I've just I have it in me to mix and match. I just love mixing and matching. And it's a good thing because I got a little bit of everything from every manufacturer, so. But I want to paint some Forged and Battle guys. But I also get excited about painting figures that you never see anybody painting. Like, I was excited about painting those tabletop games guys. Why? Because everybody just goes, oh man, them things are old. I don't want to paint them things. Oh yeah, well you know what? They can still look good, you know? Yeah, I think they're worth doing, Clay. Um, I was going to do it specific. Actually, I built this army because it has a command post. And by the way, a litter is the same way. Litter, command post, and command wagon, which I think there's only one army has it, the Khazars, or the Khazars, however you want to say it, you know. They have a command wagon. That's That, that behaves exactly the same way. A command wagon is not a war wagon that shoots. It is a It is a command post. So... It's, um, they're really interesting. They're really, really interesting. But you look at them at first glance and like, oh, these suck. Well, they're definitely a defensive piece. And, um, I'd rather have them than be the guy that has to fight them. Because they're a pain in the ass, you know. So I built the Pope, the Pope's army specifically for that, and I I picked this Byzantine army specifically because I can morph into other stuff, and it has a command post. And that stand is going to look freaking awesome. So 
It's going to have like seven figures on it, including the emperor who's mounted. Everybody else is on foot. Got his Brangian guard guys. Got a guy with a flag. Got a guy blowing a horn. That's Rick's favorite guy. That's what he said. Heraclius the horn blower. That army is going to be a hoot. So it's a chance of doing like a little diorama. Like some people get excited about building camps because it's like a diorama. I don't. I don't. I don't get excited about building like a generic camp. If there's something you know, like the camp for my Irish or something that you know you could theme for something, sure. But just having a generic camp of like tents or something like that with camp followers, I, I'm not particularly interested in it. But a command post, yeah, because it's an actual physical, like active military unit. So, but you do have to explain what it can and can't do when you get into a battle with it because it is weird. It's deceptively weird. People just assume that, oh, I, I, all I got to do is outscore it with knights and they pick up. And that's not the case. And actually, the thing that's really surprising about them is that it doesn't cost two pips to move them. Your Sarmatian army is TTG. Yeah, they're okay. There's nothing wrong with them. They've got some figures that have some character. Um, I like the style their horses are done in. A lot, actually. Just about everybody makes some stuff that looks okay. I even have some irregular figures, which I think are definitely probably three, third tier figures. But they paint up okay as well. You just have to be happy with them. Most people don't look at your damn figures anyways. You can spend all this time on an army and people don't even look at your stuff, so... You just got to do it for yourself, you know? Do you like how they look? Yes. Well, that's all that's important. Because most of the time, nobody's going to notice. You return with Swedish meatballs. British birdie. Ooh, the spicy meatball. It leave it in the oven. I gotta eat later. <laughs> They're not the Swedish meatballs from Ikea, are they? Those are actually pretty good. I don't know if they're made with cat, but they actually taste pretty good. <laughs> you probably have all eaten cat and not known it. Do a good impersonation of Rick. I didn't know he was Swedish. My daughter was little. We'd watch all those Swedish chef things. Man, she would just get a bust out laughing. Violent Muppets. You handmade them. Yep. I handmade this. And that's one of those things that, you know, people go, oh, how do you have time to paint all this? I said, well, I don't cook. You know, I don't see how people have time to cook. And I lived alone 11 years and I never cooked. I just assembled a living shit out of stuff. I don't want to spend an hour making something that takes me three and a half minutes to eat and then 30 minutes to clean up. Like, that's just, I got stuff to paint, man. I already got it slow enough. 
<laughs> this already takes long enough. And I never went hungry. We're getting closer to doing the shield. You know, there's... I might get this guy done tonight. It's possible. I just got to stay, you know, motivated and awake. This is why I got to do them by the each. I can't wait a week to see all three of them, you know? Done. I got short goals, short-term goals. I think it's time to do the shield at this point. Who does the cooking in a house? The wife. Or I assemble stuff. Like I make my lunch every day. I put a mondo salad together every day. I do my own breakfast. You know, yogurt, a banana. What else do I have? Yogurt, a banana. These little like protein crackers. That's my breakfast. And then Monday through Friday, I have a huge freaking spinach salad. Get my greens on. You know, with ham, of course. And, um... If nobody cooks dinner, I'll make a freaking sandwich. I don't give a shit. It's, I'm not that big a deal. I'm, you know, we're usually on our way to go to the gym anyway, so it doesn't need to be very, you know, complicated, but that's not, um, that's not in my, it's ma it's mainly a, a time constraint. Not that I wouldn't enjoy it. I, Cause I'm definitely not one of those people that like, oh, I eat a steak and potatoes. I'm, I'm fine with eclectic things you know but i just don't think it's worth worth the time i wouldn't have time to paint this so uh do you really want me to have a cooking show instead of uh instead of a painting show well maybe you would but uh i'm not um that's not something i'm particularly interested in okay are we doing this blue shield now i think we're i think we are all right, we need we need to pick the blue, and let's take a look at a couple of these candidates. Only thing I don't like about it is it has a red rim, and I already have one that has a red rim, but it's not blue. All right, we have a dark blue here. Again, the name of it means nothing. Intense. I think an intense might be the way to go. No. No, that one. Let me pull the other one from the bottom. See if that one's any better. I think this is the one they call Prussian. No, whatever they call it, it's not read readable anymore. Let's go with this intense one. Can I take this picture and put it up in the corner? I, think I, I bet I can do that. Uh, I bet I already have it. Do I have it saved? No, I don't think I can do it that way. All right. Everything's blue. Tony cooks things. Nah, you don't want me to. You don't want me to do that. I make drinks. I'm good at that, and that I enjoy doing. Of course, I rarely drink, so. And then lately, I've just been either having things neat or over ice, so but I rarely drink. But I do enjoy bartending, and I'm, I'm good at that. Actually, I was on a cruise last year, and we were talking about different combinations of stuff. And one guy said, man, how do you know so much about liquor? And I'm like, how do you not know this, anything about liquor? We do, sit around and drink Bud Light all day? I think it's fascinating, you know. I think it's fascinating. I'll look at the recipe. I'm like, I'm not making it that way. That's too strong. Or your, that, that, your proportions are off on that. And we're going to need red. And we don't want to use the orange red. 
Let's use the orange, the red that's not the orange, which I believe is the one we call flat red. And there it is. Take Jameson's on the right. There you go. And just sip on it, you know? You start making drinks that taste too good, you end up having too many before you, you know, before you realize it. Like I make a really good Tom Collins, but man, you gotta be careful with those things or next thing you know, it's time to go home and you're spending the night somewhere or you're breaking the law. You refuse to drink beer, hate the taste and the beer culture. What's the beer culture? See now, I like everything. And now is like, well actually right before the pandemic was, a bit, was the best time. Um, but there's all kinds of beer that appear to that appeal to everybody. What is the beer culture? I didn't know there was a beer culture. I must not be in the beer culture if I don't realize there's a beer culture. I feel that way about wine. Wine doesn't settle well with me. It's not a taste issue. I just feel like shit when I have some. And by some, I mean like, you know, a glass. Redneck culture is basically beer culture. Okay. Speaking of beer, we need to get some better beer where Rick's at. Rick needs some better beer. He's over there in... Uh, over there in the lack of taste of beer land. I pretty much like everything except wine. It's not that I don't like the taste of it. It just doesn't settle well. It doesn't... I get all flushed and shit. I get hot. Every time I have, every time I have wine, it's like I'm going through menopause. <laughs> Not a member of the beer. Yeah. There's people that drink, you know. I'm not, a, I'm not a member of any alcohol cultures. I don't drink every day. I don't. I mean, if, if I couldn't drink again, I'd be like, okay, whatever. It's not that big of a deal, you know. I don't like somebody telling me I can't have a drink, but um, it's not an important part of my life. Makes me sleepy. And I do appreciate all the different combinations. And I become a better person when I drink, unlike many people that get angry and stuff. I'm like, nope, not me. I'm a hugger. <laughs> better run that by alleyway alley. Here she's tough to please when it comes to booze. Yeah, I see homeless people. I go the other way. See ya. Nope. Uh, I rarely drink when I drink before what I call eloquent liquor, such as fine bourbon, good Irish whiskey, good rum. I become funnier if that's even possible. <laughs> yes, it's possible. It's possible for everybody. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Let's go back to this. I think that's like an orange. Is that a yellow? Get weird. Getting weird with these color combinations. Orange. Ooh, orange is just deadly. I, I don't believe that's an orange. I just don't believe that's an orange. Let's go with yellow. Orange is just... Well, let's get yellow out here. Fuck it. Let's do an orange. <laughs> Who can add yellow to it anyways? Let's see which one of these weird-ass things... It's going like look like you gotta make sure this doesn't look like freaking go gators. Gotta be careful with that. You know, people that don't have any originality, so they make the colors look like they're 
closest sports team to them. Let's see. This is better than this one, maybe. These are going to cover like shit, so. Oh, no. This is a, this is a horrid color. It's horrible. I like Irish whiskey. I actually like scotch better. And yes, it's an acquired taste. And the reason why I like it better is it's less sweet. And um, so it doesn't taste as good. So it's even more like fuel. So you got to drink it slow, but it just helps you think. Sometimes. Whoa, too much. Too much. Uh, all right, we need a little one for this one. All right. I don't think I need to use brown. I think this is fine. I'm not going to darken this too much. Now, let's look at what pattern we have on this. Okay, it's north, south, east, west, and there's red in the other ones. All right. God, I wish I was doing this seven years ago when I could just do this in 2020 vision. I wouldn't have to be like, what is that right there, you know? Like a blind person, because I freaking am. All right. One there. One there, one there, one there. All right, let's make these things bigger. They're almost like little leaves. And these are just ideas that I got from Little Big Man Studios site. I can't buy their decals even if I wanted to because they're made specifically for figure manufacturers and they wouldn't work on these Elaine two layer guys and they're not water slides so I can't just make them work with that said they do make good products but they're just kind of limited they're not they're not um they're not able to be used for all kinds of things I mean, they make 15 millimeter shield decals that work on Zyston figures and other ones that work on Old Glory and ones that are, you know, they make some that are like multi, but most of their, most of their uh, transfers are specifically made for certain manufacturers. We may have to clean that up a little bit. And we have red. We're going to use the same red that we did around the border. So let's come over here. Main thing is get all the pieces, parts in the right place where you need them before you start adding detail to them and then realize, oh shit, everything I have is, out of, is in the wrong, is out of whack. Now it doesn't go as far out as the other thing, does it? And I wish I could show you guys this, but... No, it goes most of the way, but not all the way. Okay. All right. So we're just going to drop a little line here. All right. And then let's lighten this up some.
And if I don't like how this turns out, I'll just repaint it. We're going to go ahead and do the boss in the middle so we could kind of get there's no doubt that's going to be that way all right now let's take some of this orange actually we're going to come in here with a blue let's lighten the blue up Let's see what we got. Not drawing, rather not rotten hell and ever paint an army in Philadelphia Phillies colors. <laughs> Haven't had scotch to be honest, never got around to trying it. Yeah, it's an acquired taste. What do you think of Viking Forge? Uh, I have some of their Vi some of their figures. I'm okay with them. They're hard to get. Um, I don't have a problem with them. No, I have not seen the making your own transfers, but. I'm not particularly interested in that because this is the most fun thing to do. I absolutely love painting shields. I love it. I told you I was a sadist. Love it. I hate priming figures. I hate cleaning the flash off of them. I like faces, horses, shields, all the stuff that frustrate other people. I never painted a horse until I painted my first DBA army in 2004. No reason to. We'll start adding positive colors when we bring everything else back. Just to kind of give you an idea, I don't know if it's going to come out worth a damn here. Let me make my attempt. We got all the parts there where they need to be. We just need to shade them up. So that's the standard blue color. The blue is going to come up a little bit, but we're not going to do that until we have the stuff that's around the center done. So, all right. So here's this shitty ass orange we should be able to ro roll right into it Just a tiny little bit of yellow. Maybe a little bit of yellow. And then maybe a little bit of white after that. Let's shade this up a little bit. <laughs> Gotta go catch you later. Can't spell on Tuesdays. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm a dyslexic typer. 
I'm a dyslexic typer. I'll get everything there, and I can't. I can't look at the screen and type. I'm a little too um, old for that. I don't know. I, I didn't take typing in school. So I make mistakes unintentionally typing that I would never do if I was handwriting it. And I find it really frustrating because it takes longer than it should. Oh, shit. We're going to have another one of those. I need to quit my day job moments. I love it when I'm like, I impress the shit out of myself. I'm like, I don't know if this is going to work. And the next thing is like, fuck it, bring it on. You just got to take one step at a time. You know, and some things are just going to take a little longer. It's just... It is what it is. Hot fucking damn. I'll post up the original shield there. in a moment. This is super easy. This is super easy. You just have to... You got to get all the proportions in the right place. I, I don't want to use this brush for this. This is a special mission brush. If you can use a brush that's a little bit bigger and get away with it, use the bigger brush so you can save the lifespan on the on your special ones I can't control how these armies are going to do in battle, but I can control how much I'm going to like how these guys turn out. And so far, I've been really happy in that department. With the last seven or so armies, Now we'll take this blue. Now we'll take this blue. Add a little bit of white to it. And then I've been doing to kind of get around some of this stuff. It's almost like a wet stipple. But you got to be careful with the wet because if you, you know, I don't want to have to fix all this stuff. I could. I could screw this up big time and have to spend time fixing it. Well, I really have no interest in, in fixing things. I'd rather just do it right the first time. And you know, the thing is, is, I don't really need to paint without contacts because of seeing it that much better. I just can't, I can't see and I used to paint in 2020 and I can't anymore. I can't see things that are close anymore. No 
those visor things just don't work for me. take a look at that. Let me get this picture on here. All right, let's let's see if I can pull this off. I don't think I saved these things, these pictures. I think I've I slapped them on directly onto the Excel sheet, didn't I? So I need to go to Fudge, how can I do this? Um, here. Yeah, I slapped it right on that sheet. All right, so let me go to Little Big Man Studios. Little Big Man Studios. Okay, and I'm going to do a search for Byzantine. I don't care what scale they're in. Okay, and then I'm just going to have to try to find it. And unfortunately, there's eight freaking pages of them. It shouldn't take that long to do. Found it. That's the infantry one. No, mine looks a little bit different than that. But mine did not have the white around it, which I did not want to do because it's going to look too similar to the red, white, and blue colors I used on the other one. Here it is. It might have a tiny little bit of white, but we're just going to ignore that. So let's see if we can save image as. Let's put it under the Byzantine shield folder here. Save. Okay. Now we're going to go in here and take this and right click it. Properties. We're going to browse and find that file. And I will show you what the originals look like. See if I can make that smaller. That's the shield I'm painting. Okay. Now, looks brighter on the screen than it is. That's pretty close. And honestly, a freaking piece of cake. Um, yeah. Old Glory. I'm a fan of Old Glory. Yep, and it looks even better after you seal them. I don't know what the hell happens when you seal, but it evens everything out. But that's there's kind of like a little blue motif to it, you know, that ties into the color of the shield. It does, I don't want it to be the same color blue. Um, it would be impossible to because the shield would have paint and, um, and, the, and the cloth is, well, you know, cloth. So you wouldn't be able to match the two things anyway. So uh, I think it's time for our friend Noln Oil. So when you do that, that takes a little bit of while to, to, to do its thing. Well, are you opposed to, are you opposed to resin? Because those Corvus belly, actually their hundred years war stuff actually looks pretty good. And, um, Man, 
everybody makes hundred years of war stuff. I, I wouldn't recommend Old Glory. As much as I like Old Glory, I wouldn't recommend them for hundred years of war. They just I think their lances are just too thin. You have to replace all their damn lances, they're gonna break on you. Um Old Glory lances come in two flavors. Way too thick or way too thin. They're kind of all over the place. And the two thick ones are all right, except they sometimes look like tree trunks. You know, they're rough hewn for sure. And um, and they're just odd. And the thin ones are just worthless. You can't, you can't do anything with them. They're, they're way too, way too, way too thin. And their Hundred Years War guys, I believe, have the way too thin kind. I have some of them. Um... I wouldn't go with Essex because Essex just stuff is just, they have some weird, they have a lot of knights that are like, I don't want to have anything to do with this freaking lance. And they're just in weird poses. Um, what else do we have? We have, a, we have a little bit of that to touch up. But Corvus Belly actually make, as long as you're not planning on building two Hundred Years War armies, because I wouldn't want to use them for both. You know, I'd use them for the English or the French or whichever one you want to do. Um, okay. Um, this guy needs a little cloth that he's sitting on, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the same red, but we're going to mix brown into it, so it'll be the same but different. So we're going to come over here, I don't want it to be the same color as the shield, it just looks like I was lazy. crazy shit. And I mean crazy shit is just like, just start adding white to this color. And a little bit of red. And just see where it goes from there. say you know what what if this thing was striped all right well, what if it was striped so come in here and add a little bit more white to it Just add a little pattern on there. And of course, you're going to need to add a little bit more white so it stands out.
We got the saddle, a beard, the reins, and the mane and stuff. Right, let's take a look at what kind of trouble you guys have been causing. Uh, close bones, plugs. Yeah, they're carried by. Well, somebody just mentioned it. Um, plastic Soldier Company. Yeah, you'd build both sides. Yeah, I wouldn't. I I wouldn't use them there. I wouldn't. They don't have a huge amount of variety. Flea market. We're not going to find anything if it's a flea market off the street. If it's like at a convention, sure. Not off the street. Hold on, I'll be right back. All right, well, we're almost done with this guy. We're going to go ahead and call it a night. And uh, I'm going to watch some TV with my daughter since I haven't done anything with her all day. But um, she was. But anyhow, this is where we're at. This is how you do a shield. It's pretty easy. Um, yeah. Catch you guys next time. Um, probably tomorrow.